okay guys so welcome back so let's begin doing our awesome work and the first thing we're going to do is before we create our interface we're going to need some basic stuff so there are things that we need whether we like it or not for example we need to connect to our database obviously so let's open uh, localhost slash php my admin and of course don't forget to have apache and mysql running in your zamp control panel so once we get here we're going to click on new we want to create a new database or we can just go to the sql tab and create a new database so we're just going to say create database if not exists that's optional so we're going to create a database named uh, what do we name it school db something like this you can give it any name that you like uh, this is okay for now so school db and then click go okay so our database has been created if we go down here we we'll see this school db very good so let's click on it and now we can create a table now it's important to note that we are going to have multiple uh we're going to have multiple schools in here so each user is going to to need uh to have a column that will um identify which school they are from so let's create a users table here all users will be in here whether they are students their admins or their lecturers their details will be in here so at this point let's just hit go uh let's go okay so users there we go so let's create an id here now you could if you wanted to uh give separate tables for students and for lecturers but for the sake of this tutorial we're going to use just one so i'll say id this will be the ID for everyone. Now, since this is a multi-level school project, uh, you may want to use big int, but int is okay as well because it's quite a large number anyway. So the ID, and then we're going to need the first name, first underscore name, or you can just write first name as one word, and then we'll have the last name like so. So these are going to be very basic details and we're going to need to know the date when this was created and we are running out of uh, columns so let's add a few more just click away and add more okay so first name last name date and then what we need now is the what we call the the id the unique identifier for this user now it's okay to use this id here to identify a user However, I find that uh, when, for example, you want to, let me give a scenario where this ID, using the primary key ID is not a very good idea. So let's say, for example, you have, let me create a new file here. Let's say you have several files. You have one, two, these are record numbers, right? ID four and so on. And then you decide, okay, I want to delete uh, record number three. So you delete record number three. So now there's a gap here, right? But then there's a user, all these are users here. So these records, whatever records they create in the database are going to have this ID to identify who created those records, right? So once, once that ID is associated with them, you cannot change it. Otherwise the records will not match anymore. But then you have a situation where you have a database that you have deleted so many records in between, but then you want to clean it up because eventually the database becomes slow because too many records, too many gaps in those records. And so the indices are not, have been patched up so many times that the database becomes slow. So now if you move this data to another database, you still have these gaps again, because there'll be one, two, and then all the deleted records, four, five. Now you can squeeze them to say, okay, number four, let me change that to three, just so that it matches. 
because once you change that, then all the records by that user are lost. So in order to avoid this kind of thing, I give a second identifier here, a second ID for the user. That way they have this primary key, but they have another separate identifier over here, whereby if I replace the, or I decide to create a new database and move this data, I won't care about the primary key, right? I can squeeze these in, I can change this to three and change that to four. That way it's a good sequence like this. But then the IDs that are being used for the records will remain as they were. So hopefully that is making sense. If not, uh, just trust me, it's better that way. So we add the ID, first name, last name, date, and then this is the one. I like to call it the URL address. You can call it an ID, that's okay. The reason I do this is because this is what we put in the URL link to identify this particular user. So you can call it URL ID or user ID, doesn't really matter. So I'll just call that because uh, I'm used to it. And then here we're going to have to add gender and then uh, what else? Now, another important thing is the school ID, like I had mentioned before. So we're going to say school underscore ID. Now the ID for the school will also be a similar format to this one, but we just call that school ID. Or maybe for the sake of this tutorial, I can change this to user ID, just so you're more comfortable with it. I'll have to get used to it. And once we have that, I think this is all the information we need for now. So ID, first name, last name, date. So the information here I am putting is only the generic information that everybody shares from the lecturer to the student to the admin. This is information they all share. And then finally, I will put the rank over here so that we can know uh, what level they are. You can call it rank or you can call it level. That's up to you. So I think this is all the information we need. So let's go to types now. We'll leave this at int, but we'll put this at variable character. Same thing here. Date will obviously be date time. If you don't care about the time exactly that the person uh, signed up, you can just select date to save space. And what else? Mm, but let's just put it at date time so we can see how to handle that. Now the user ID here is going to be a variable character and not a number. So variable character for gender, same thing here, variable character, rank will be variable character as well. So the rank is something like when we say receptionist or reception, that would be a rank, admin would be a rank, lecturer would be a rank like this. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, so maybe let's put 20 characters just so we are safe. And then on the ID, we're going to put 60 characters. Now you can put 100 if you want, but I think 60 is more than enough. This is going to be the unique ID. It could be 60 characters long just to make sure that there are no repeats whatsoever. Then user ID, we're going to have 60 as well there. The gender uh, is six because the highest is female. And what else here? Variable character, 30 characters I think can describe a person's name and the last name, 30 characters like that, or maybe even 20 and 20. And then the int will default to 10, so we can leave that. This will give its own default. And so we are fine. Here we'll say auto increment and select primary key as well. Just make sure of that. And then if there are any, uh, any of these that you may not need to fill in once you sign up the user, you can select the no to make it accept an empty value. Okay, so for now, let's hit save. Hopefully everything is good. All right, now let's add some indices for every uh, column that we may use to search here. We may want to search for a user's first name. 
we may also need to search for their last name as well so index there as well last name we may need to search for when they signed up by date so let's add one there we may also need to use the no that user id will probably oh yeah we will need to use that as well index in the url school id as well we may need to search by gender and we may need to search by rank so let's just add all of these so originally uh, this tutorial was supposed to be done in code igniter but i realized that um, i think the basics are better so we we're just going to do this from scratch uh, pure php in object oriented format that way you can pick up a few things it's not about finishing quickly but it should be about learning okay so now that we have a database and we have one table at least we are good to go in our php so i'll see you in the next video where we begin constructing our app